SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball GT Super Saiyan 4 Goku was released in Japan on the 23rd of November with an intended original release date a month earlier on the 30th of October. Super Saiyan 4 Goku is a general over-the-counter release and retails for 6,000 yen or roughly 55 US dollars. Yes, I know I mention this every time, but for those who are new to the channel, I am based here in Japan and this is the Japanese release. Bluefin US are officially bringing Super Saiyan 4 Goku to the States late next month in December. So if you missed out on the initial pre-orders, there is a good chance you can still find him somewhere local to you at retail. So you know those moments in life that affect you on a deep personal level, the ones that really change you. It could be the day that you find your purpose in this world or an experience that shapes your very existence. The one special memory you hold on to and take with you to your deathbed. Well, I'm here to tell you that that day is one of those moments. SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball GT Super Saiyan 4 Goku is finally here. Arguably the most long-awaited figure in the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball series. A figure that until recent was merely a dream and unattainable grail for many GT fans and collectors alike. Well, that dream is now a reality and boy was it worth the wait because I can tell you right off the bat, there is so much, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Magnificence uh, going on with this figure, almost to a point that it's kind of hard uh, to find a nitpick or a flaw about Goku in, in any way. Yes, I was intentionally being overdramatic with my intro, but this really is, I guess you can say, kind of a milestone for the SH Free Gods Dragon Ball line, being the first Dragon Ball GT figure Tamashi have ever produced. Dragon Ball GT is a property that honestly doesn't get enough positive attention, uh, in my opinion, you know, for reasons that I'm not going to get into right now, but there genuinely are a lot of fans of this series and, you know, whether you enjoy GT or not, there definitely are some interesting concepts, memorable villains, and for me personally, some of the best designs uh, from the series in terms of transformations, which leads me directly into the figure itself. As you would expect, Super Saiyan 4 Goku is a completely brand new sculpt. Absolutely no reuse of any previously released Goku figures. Yes, even the pants are new, being much wider and baggier uh, than any previous iteration. But the first thing you'll notice is just how tanky uh, Super Saiyan 4 Goku is compared with his slimmer and trimmer counterparts. This ain't your welterweight Conor McGregor Goku. This guy here is your heavy hitter Mike Tyson Goku, and so he should be. Super Saiyan 4 Goku was always, in my eyes, a little bit broader, a little bit more muscular in terms of mass uh, than your regular Super Saiyan transformation. And I understand that it could very well be just the art style, but I think uh, this translated perfectly to plastic form. Just look at the size of those arms. The proportions are undeniably Super Saiyan 4. The voluminous hair, the broad shoulders, stocky torso, and the baggy pants are all synonymous to Goku's look in this form. The fur on Goku's torso, arms, hands, and tail are beautifully sculpted. Uh, just look at that gorgeous detail. But if I could nitpick just one thing, and this is really is just a minor nitpick, a bit of shading, I think, would have highlighted those details, you know, just a little bit more as the detail can kind of get a little bit lost in a sea of pinkish red. However, the chest and the abdominal area does break that up, giving the upper half a bit of contrast. You know, you've got your textured fur, but you also have your smooth skin as well. And again, excellent sculpt work with the musculature as well. What I really think Tamashi did right uh, was the attention to detail with the coloring of the wrists, uh, the ankles, and the butterfly joints. Details that, you know, might not be too noticeable at first glance, uh, but having the wrist and butterfly joints pink really helps connect the fur all the way from the shoulders to the hands without, you know, breaking up that natural flow. Yes, even having blue ankle joints gives the illusion that Goku is wearing a pair of low-cut shoes covered by whatever he wears over his ankles. Tamashi doesn't get it right all the time, but they did this time, so well done. 
The head to me is perfect. There really isn't any other way to put it. Tamashi is just spot on in capturing the features that make Super Saiyan 4 Goku look like well, Super Saiyan 4 Goku. The hair is gorgeously sculpted and exceptionally well balanced, having just enough volume with the right amount of strands at just the right length. The way the hair is sculpted kind of reminds me of Figure Arts Bardock where the individual strands don't just have lines etched in for detail, but the strands kind of have layers if that makes any sense. The angles are sharp and defined. The sculpt is, I guess, more complex, uh, more three-dimensional, and just has a lot more depth. Tamashi have also engineered the hair to move with the articulation, having the two side strands of hair that rest on Goku's shoulders as separate pieces. So when you move the head side to side or tilt it on an angle, the strands will move accordingly. And whilst this won't completely free up the articulation, you will get much better movement than say if the hair were one solid piece. Now for that handsome looking face, and it's the eyes that really stand out for me with those striking yellow pupils, the heavy pink outline. There is definitely something about the Super Saiyan 4 look that I feel sets it aside from Goku's other transformations. And it's reflected extremely well here with the face plates. I've been saying this a lot recently, but Tamashi are absolutely killing it with these anime-esque, anime-inspired face sculpts. As far as I'm concerned, this is Super Saiyan 4 Goku plucked straight out of the animation and into my hands. So I know a lot of you will probably ask me about QC issues, but uh, unfortunately uh, for my copy of Super Saiyan 4 Goku, he does suffer... Uh, from a bit of loosey-goosey here at the uh, light right leg. And it's only the right leg, uh, which is unfortunate. The uh, left leg here is perfectly fine and can hold uh, pretty much any position that I that I pose his leg, Goku's leg in. Uh, it really is only this left leg. It doesn't want to hold that, that angle, that particular angle. It just kind of flops down. And that's pretty much it in terms of QC issues. I mean, all the other joints, pretty smooth, nothing loose, nothing overly too tight. And, you know, even at the the uh, torso here, which is prone to have like overly tight um, joints and, you know, tend to be a little bit squeaky is is totally fine with, with my copy again. In terms of paint work, uh, you really only have to kind of worry about the uh, chest here because that's the uh, the main painted area uh, for Goku, the uh, the chest, the flesh tone here is painted over that uh, that pink plastic. So do be careful when you, uh, you know, I guess uh, do some ab crunch articulation. You don't want to chip any of that, that paint, but uh, so far I haven't had any problems. All the other paint apps uh, here on the wrists um, are fine. Nothing, uh, nothing major so far. And again, it really is only that right leg that's been giving me issues and uh, which is unfortunate but um, I guess you know you can't win them all and uh, yeah I guess if I w was to to fix it I'd probably warm up that that area here pop out the leg and I guess add some floor polish or some kind of like sealant to it just to just to tighten it up and I guess that should fix the problem but yeah let me know if you guys have any problems with your copy uh, so far for me that's that's the only issue that I've encountered but um, yeah Okay, so on to articulation and this guy is amazing in terms of how well it moves. Uh, Tamashi kind of advertised how, you know, how much they worked on the shoulders, how uh, they improved on the articulation around that area to, to give Goku, you know, better articulation, um, to, to pose better when he does the Kamehameha. As you can see here, if I can get that to focus, there we go, sorry guys. But uh, what really impressed me is is the head and how well it moves. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, you get these two side hair pieces here that kind of move along uh, with with how Goku moves his head. You know, you can tilt, you can move side to side and they don't get in the way. And it's because these hair pieces here are on, I guess, you know, ball, ball joints attached to the base of his head. So, you know, you've got that there on the sides, but you've also got these two uh, back pieces here as well which are on ball hinges uh, which is fantastic 
you know, so you can, you know, move them out of the way. And it does have a little bit of weight to it. Um, but, you know, this means that Goku can look, you know, way up. And also bury his head into his chest as well. So that's that's really fantastic that they've included those ball hinges there at the back. Of course, you know, you can get him to move side to side. And, you know, tilt. He's just got a lot of range in his head. And, you know, like most, you know, figures, uh, the neck joint here is a separate piece. But, you know, you probably won't even have to use it to get you know, Goku to move his head because, again, he's just got so much range there just in the head itself. Uh, going to the shoulders, uh, like I said earlier, uh, Bandai have, uh, Tamashi has improved on the uh, butterfly joints here to give Goku more range. And you can see it right there. He can bring his arms really far forward deep into his chest and that's going to help with you know kamehameha poses punch poses whatever because yeah you just get really good range there with the shoulder joints with the butterfly joint sorry and um what's really great is that they sculpted in fur in those joints as well they didn't cheap out on us which is fantastic looks great pretty much at all angles um and the set the same can be said for you know, the, uh, the hinges in his shoulders, the, uh, the joints there at his elbows, all of that is sculpted in. Just really uh, nice attention to detail. Uh, yes, Goku does move his arms past, not past, well, I guess it's 90 degrees, but it's pretty good. He gets 360 there at the shoulder, bicep swivel, uh, double jointed elbows. And again, like I said, the elbow joints there are sculpted in. The fur is sculpted in. Fantastic. And of course you do get uh, your standard swivel and uh, hinge there at the wrist as well. His torso. We get some really good range of movement there at the torso. Around and around it goes. You can get Goku to crunch pretty far forward. There we go. And pretty far back as well. Yes, you get some tilt. There we go. And of course you get waist swivel there. Belt is a loose piece. For his legs, uh, you can't get Goku to kick back because the uh, I guess his butt there is one solid piece. Uh, traditionally with Goku figures, the... Uh, I guess the butt is kind of cut and you get that kind of like diaper-ish uh, section there at the front and at the back, but uh, they've sculpted that whole butt area there. So he can't kick back, but uh, he can kick forward past 90, which is great. And he can do a full split. Fantastic. Upper thigh swivel. You get double jointed knees, good range of motion there. Nice uh, knee joint. There isn't a boot cut, but they've improved on the uh, ankle joint here. And I mentioned this on my uh, Imagination Works Vegeta uh, review, how they have this big, uh, I guess, ball hinge with a peg that goes into the uh, the foot and they've incorporated that bit of articulation with Super Saiyan 4 Goku and I'm so happy that they did that because the range of movement that you get with the uh, ankle tilt is so much better. Look at that. It's so much better than the uh, traditional uh, dumbbell joint that uh, all the other Gokus use and it just gives you so much more movement and gives you so many more options you know when you pose you can have his foot flat this time on the floor and it just looks so much better as well of course you get the uh the toe joint there and like i said uh yeah swivel at the foot and fantastic <laughs> really fantastic i'm really happy about this um 
angle tilt there. So again, yeah, this is, sorry, okay, sorry, I, I totally missed the tail. We have a, uh, a ball hinge there at the tail, so you can swivel it around and around, and you can, you know, hinge it up and down as well. The uh, tail is one solid piece, and there isn't a joint uh, in the middle or anything. Uh, all the articulation there is at the base. And what I was going to say is that uh, this is probably one of the best articulated figures in the line. I mean, I was really impressed with the Ginyu Force figures, and those those figures are, are phenomenal in terms of articulation. You can get them into some really fantastic poses. Cooler was great as well, but this guy here, I don't know, they just, everything feels like, I don't know, just really well done. Um, you know, we've we've got some fantastic range of movement in the head, the shoulders fantastic, and, you know, the feet are just icing on the cake. This is a really fun, really, really excellent figure to pose, and I think I'll have this, you know, on my desk, on my shelf, um, you know, I'll be playing it, playing with this guy for uh, for a really long time, probably. For accessories, I think we get pretty much all you need for a Goku figure. Nothing out of the ordinary, but definitely enough to give you some options, especially with the hands, we get a ton of hands. So for hands, we get two fists, and again, we have that really nice sculpted inferred detail on all of the hands, actually. We get a pair of instant transmission hands, a set of fighting pose hands, some open palm blast hands, I guess you could say. And we actually get two sets of Kamehameha hands. One set, uh, which is a normal set of Kamehameha hands, and another set, which I will show off in just a bit. For faces, it's four very beautiful face plates, but the uh, smirk smiling face is probably my favorite face out of the set. And yes, we also get a 10 times Kamehameha effect as well, uh, which looks pretty awesome. It kind of fades uh, from a clear pink plastic to a, a, a darker, I guess it's kind of shaded here there at, at the base. And you can see there that it kind of uh, gets lighter as it gets to the tips of the uh, of the beams there and what's fantastic about this uh, effect is that you can actually plug it into goku comes with two sets of kamehameha hands uh, one without the pegs and one with pegs as you can see here this is the right hand and you can just plug it in there's a hole there for the uh, kamehameha effect and it goes in like that really good idea they should do this with, uh, Tamashi should do this with all of their characters well, with this kind of effect. No more sticky tack, no more blue tack. Plugs right in and you can do it with the left or the right hand. And it makes it so much easier to pose those charging or energy charging effect poses. Very simple, but very effective. Nice work, Tamashi. With this release, it's not a matter of to buy or not to buy. It's how do I find one at retail before they all sell out and shoot up in price on the aftermarket. Fortunately, Super Saiyan 4 Goku is a regular release, so picking one up shouldn't, and the keyword here is shouldn't, be as hard as a web exclusive. Uh, in saying that, all pre-orders sold out almost immediately, and I think we're still gonna get a similar situation to what we do with Super Saiyan 3 Goku, which sold out almost immediately as well on its initial release, and again, just as quickly on its second run. Seriously, you don't wanna sleep on this one. If you find it at retail, pick it up. Even if you're not a GT fan, which I'm not, this is just an amazing figure that is a joy to pose due to the updated articulation, especially in the shoulders. There's more than enough accessories to make the release feel complete. There really isn't anything I felt the figure came without, 
that hurt the overall package and if nothing else it just looks so damn good. As I mentioned at the start of this video Super Saiyan 4 Goku is one of those characters that many collectors thought would have never actually see come to fruition despite being teased with a prototype way back when the 1.0 Goku body was still relevant Tamashi always managed to I guess steer away from GT in favor for other Dragon Ball properties. It's a character that people have spent exuberant amounts of money on for custom pieces and to many uh, is kind of a grail for their collection. So the fact that we are finally getting GT figures in the SH Figure Arts line is definitely a step forward and I think something Tamashi will continue with but just take a little bit more time to get to all the notable characters from the series. I think patience is the key here and while I don't see Tamashi releasing a GT character every other month, it's definitely exciting to see what they have in store for us in the near future. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the review as much as I enjoy reviewing it. Actually, it was kind of a hassle, but uh, that, that's kind of another story. I had my package sent to another address and then I had to go to that other place to pick it up. And this is the second time for me to record it because I forgot to turn on the switch uh, on my mic. But all in all, I still really, really enjoyed the figure. I really still enjoyed reviewing it. Uh, this really is worthy of my figure of 2021 title. Probably still kind of neck and neck uh, right now with Cooler. But I guess we'll have to see. There is still two more releases. Uh, Dragon Ball Super, Android 17 and 18. But uh, yeah, wow, two more months. Pretty crazy. As always, thank you for dropping by. You guys are the best. Take care out there. Keep healthy. And of course... Yoroshiku!